Like folks, we're back here again for another week. Uh, we have uh, New York fresh off his, his victory on Saturday night, uh, Shane Carty. Um, we have Mickey Cunningham joining us in a few minutes as well. Um, all right, lads, how's the farm, Shane? How are you getting on? Great, yeah. It's a mental couple of days there. Uh, we're going <laughs> off a few hours sleep, but uh, as you can probably hear in my voice. <clears throat> but uh, no, look, the dust is starting to settle now. I was back in work today and... Uh, um, I'm back up in Boston. I flew back up uh, yesterday afternoon, so uh, a bit of a come down today. All right. Wait, were you you were on the Sunday game on Sunday night? Were you? Yeah, yeah. Flynn uh, rang me. It was like, uh, "Come here, we're going to go on the Sunday game. Uh, any chance you'd be able to come on?" And I was like, "But I'm after having about six bottles here. Like, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> he was like, uh, look, we'll give you a couple of hours." And I was like, "All right, all right, sound." Yeah. So I just had to have a coffee and relax for a little bit <laughs> for fuck's sake and um, what's a bit like in terms of how just getting back to you how I didn't know you are actually back in bomb shape um, obviously you got back in bomb in January how did that come about or what happened there it was it was a bit mad like because um, I'd been training in the gym with a buddy of mine Kieran McFaul who yeah. um, got into a bit of trouble in Boston and he was staying with me for you know while this whole core thing was going on and uh like he's an animal trainer and was in the gym like doing mental stuff and um so i was training with him kind of over the winter and then i got a text on instagram from one of the lads on the squad this guy um luke um he came on in the in extra time there and he basically just like any chance he'd want to play with new york and i was like uh, i mean i wouldn't rule it out but like i haven't um you know i haven't played inter-county football in a couple of years I have to get myself right but I said look I still want to play at my club in Boston so if there's a way that I could play with the, with, with Donegal Boston and still because I don't want to be transferring to New York to play yeah. club football in New York all summer like it just wouldn't have worked out like um, so they said alright leave it with us and then I got a call from the manager in like I think it was like the 10th of January Yeah, uh, and was like yeah look we found out that like New York was your home county so technically you can declare back for your home county some sort of loophole anyway and um basically the way like Shane Walsh is able to play for Galway but have his club in in, in Dublin in the Croaks well, so I said all right well fair enough um look at give me a couple of weeks to get stuff organized here and we just I kind of looked at the calendar and I was like right how are we logistically going to do this and he said they were very accommodating Shane, sorry, hold on one sec. Shane, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, mate. yeah, no, Mickey's after joining us there. How's things, Mickey? Well, man, how's it going? You're just after going going through Shane's uh, <laughs> thought process there. So, um, what I was going to say, no, sorry, go on, Shane. I just continue there for what were you saying there? Sorry, miss. Yeah, no, no, it was just we were basically just like looking at the diary and how it work. So I basically was like, right, well, I'll, I'll come down on a Thursday. We, we mapped it out it was like 10 trips in total um, because of Paddy's week I was back actually in Ireland and I had booked at work so I was going to be in, in Cheltenham and away in Ireland so it was like 10 trips in total come down on a Thursday my dad has a house in New York in Yonkers so I'd stay there Thursday train with the lads work remotely Friday train Saturday and fly back up Sunday so it was like right look 10 trips I can I can make that work like um bit different than what you were doing virus going up and down in the one day <laughs> yeah. you telling me the story there you to get to the city west hotel or something and it was a four hour bus back route so like i was like i'm not doing stuff like that like no so, no no, no. Um, it worked out well it worked out well stevie do you want to cut across there man no oh, listen lads well done shane well done Mickey, well done uh fantastic victory fantastic victory face um i i was over in 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 the states in, in 2019 actually uh, stayed up in Yonkers, um, great, great part of the world, uh, great part of the world, man. And I know, obviously, from chatting to Mickey Coleman and a few others that have been driving a lot of the underage stuff there, lads, over the last number of years. I know they've had great success. Their field teams have had great success, but 
can you see lads within the squad? Obviously, you know, you are both obviously players that have played over here in Ireland. But from a homegrown perspective, I see Mickey Brosnan scored the penalty. He's obviously a, a, an American native. Like, is there is there development coming, lads? Is there Mickey? Is there is there a lot of young lads coming through the panel? Uh, yeah, definitely. But um, I suppose a different sort of angle on that is uh, a few years ago I was involved with like a ladies senior team here, and all the girls were literally like. I'd say about eighty percent of them are under the age of twenty. All Irish, all Irish Americans. Like, like we literally only had maybe one or two Irish players of a panel of thirty, and the technical quality of them was unbelievable. Um, just kind of goes to show like the the great coaching and work being done. You know, in New York, uh, yeah, it's the best example I can think of. Just of like, you know, you're asked to kind of take a few sessions. You think this is gonna be, you know, basic or whatever, and. I remember going to it and being like, these girls are unbelievable footballers. Like, like technically, like their skills, their fundamentals are unreal. And it's like, mm. you could just see it pretty, instant- pretty instantaneously that like they've been doing, you know, hours and hours of work themselves or being coached for years. Like, and uh, yeah, it was an eye opener for me. But then, yeah, we have some lads on the team uh, who are like full, you know, full, full American born, like a few younger Barnabas lads. And, you know, they're, unreal technically as well like like it's like there's no real difference you know what i mean like like uh yeah it's it's mm-hmm. like it's hard to kind of explain but you know you wouldn't think that these guys grew up never like you know playing like GAA like all full time like like they're equally as good as boys at home you know so Sh- yeah. just to get yeah. back like Sh- shane obviously left in 09 right uh have you have you noticed much of a difference like mickey how long are you there mickey how long uh, have you been since, here? since the end of 2017. Okay, okay. Um, have you, yeah, have you noticed the standards come up, boys? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <clears throat> it's it's. I'm, I'm delighted you asked uh, Mickey that question, um, Stephen, because I wouldn't have been able to. I was joking with. I was giving a bit of trash talk to some of the Leitrim boys. I was like, I don't even know these lads' names on the team. Like, and yeah, you still can't be. Just like, I, I've never done as much trash talk in my life. Um, but we kind of need to go to that place. Uh, we need to go to that place. Like, oh, um, it would be um, like yeah. I, I had a lot of stuff prepared for that one. Another one. Was, uh, what's, what's worth I believing us is having to back to the team. I know Mickey. I know Mickey a long time, and Mickey, Mickey's fond of a bit of trash talking too. Like, nah, I'm only Mickey, the problem, Mickey would never open his mouth when I when I remember him playing for fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> Another one I was saying was, uh, "What's worse about losing to us is you'll have to go back to Leitrim." <laughs> 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 uh, in fairness, though, in fairness, I met um, I met Shane Quinn. He was a centre back um, late, uh, early hours of Sunday morning um, or Monday morning. And uh, like I was like, I oh, look no hard feelings, and he was laughing. He was saying, "Ah, oh, like we 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 knew what the crack was, and there was there was it was a good out. We were laughing. We took a picture and stuff." So, but um, in terms of development, like yeah, like when I left in two thousand nine, New York was very much just thrown together. There was no real squad unity. It was like literally like just tr- throwing a group of fifteen players out there. Yeah. Whereas when I came yeah. back into the squad this year. Um, like Mickey was there last year, so maybe he'll know more. But for me, it just felt like this was an actual real team. They had a real group of guys that are very tight, and I felt like my whole thing was I didn't want it to be. You know, it's never as far as you know what it's like. It's never about one individual. It's always about the team. But I felt like there was a massive platform of of like unity and a real bond between all the players, and I got a real sense of team that that buzz from the guys. Likes of Mickey, as soon as I met guys, they just you could see their energy. They're just very positive, and they were delighted that I was, you know, willing to come in and commute and and try and give that effort. So, I definitely felt like a massive difference compared to what it was like in two thousand nine. Very good, Mickey. Mickey, Johnny McGinney, Johnny McGinney, the manager. Who else is in with Johnny? Uh, Gareth, <coughs> Gareth Bailey, boy from Bransford. And, oh, Bransford. Uh, a, Bransford yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a boy Mick Catterson as well. He's from Tyrone. And there's another lad, Brian Henry from Sligo. Uh, there's there's a good few in the backroom team, like Sharon, Sinead, and Michelle as well. All help out, and Kevin Moriarty. Like there is some some squad of people there, but like in terms of just saying about like the quality in that, uh, definitely there's unreal quality in New York. Like even St Barnabas winning the, the senior championship two years in a row. Like 
they're all Irish American players, and like they're beating teams that have you know like established county players. Like for example, I know they beat Sligo in the final that had Peter Cook playing. Uh, I play with Brooklyn, and literally nearly every player on our team would have played county football at the time. And you know, it's always a one point game against like Barnabas, whatever. It's really, really tight. Like, so that kind of illustrates just how good these guys are. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, super, super. Uh, and lads, what's just what's um, you know, preparation, lads? Obviously, Leitrim had the league, the national league to prepare for this. Like, what, what's the story with your preparation in terms of warm up games? Who do you play? What goes on there? Yeah, it was difficult because, like exactly what you said, we were, we were just playing in-house games maybe every weekend and the message we were trying to say is like, these are our league games like and trying to build yourselves up for them. But it's very difficult. Like, you know, you, you both know yourself, like an in-house game, you're still kind of minding yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we did have a lot of knocks and niggles, like a good few mm-hmm. lads were carrying injuries even going into this game. So like the training on the Astro turf for me, you know, up, up in Boston, it's grass. And trying to get back used to playing on that was uh, definitely took me a bit of time to get used to that and no spring chicken anymore. So trying to put the mileage on the legs fairly quick, I felt it massively. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like it was very, honestly, it's, it's very hard to, to, to try and get yourself up for in-house games and training. Um, and, and Mickey, I'm sure yeah. it's the same for you. Yeah, yeah, like that was the big, that's the big thing, like, like, no, never doubted the quality in our team or anything, but it's just like, uh, <coughs> those, them getting those, those league games and, you know, those other games where they're playing together as a team is pretty invaluable and maybe that showed just when the game starts because, you know, maybe we have some guys, it's just hard to get up to that pace, like, straight away, whereas Leitrim were out of the blocks, you know, they were 3-0 up, I think, in the first 10 minutes, Um, but yeah, that was, that is probably the most difficult thing, but at the same time, as Shane said there, we sort of put, like, every weekend we're playing each other and boys be cutting lumps out of one another, like, you know yourselves, like, just to try and stake a claim for a jersey. So, although it's not the exact same as, you know, playing together as a unit or whatever, because, you know, you know yourself, when you go play, like, away games or whatever, you, you get good bonds and, good, you know, get playing with lads and you can build relationships. But uh, I still think our in-house games were pretty good every weekend, like, I see London. Adrian yeah. Barty had joked uh, that we never actually we were in the physio and we were we were laughing and joking saying we act, we actually never actually trained together, um, and we had no idea what way it was gonna like you know because I was gonna be kicking the ball in and I was like well what way do you want me kicking this ball like this is right before the game like the, the night before and he was like I was like we need to talk to the lads like how we're we gonna get scores here, and um, we just had a bit of a meeting and and it was kind of like we better try and put some some structure in place here otherwise we're just gonna be helter skelter. Um, and you could probably see that, like Mick said, the first 10 minutes, we we were a little bit just trying to get to the pace of it, you know what I mean? And then once we kind of got our, our foothold in the game, we felt grand. Uh, so, so, that was, that was so, the problem, really. Sorry, did you stay together the night before, boys? Or, like, you know, in terms of, did you do, like, you know, standards, We like you said, video analysis. Did you do video analysis and all that type of jazz? Like, do you have S&C with the boys? Obviously, you've a lot of inter-county boys there. They'd be doing gym work themselves. Like, is that obviously just standard now at this stage? There was no no S and C, no like it was kind of do a bit of your own gym stuff yourselves, um, which luckily we we have guys with experience that know what to be yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, but we, we a little bit of video analysis, like we watched their their kickouts and like we were getting the games, but we weren't really collectively <coughs> watching as a group. Yeah. And and I guess my whole thing was, I don't want to put no disrespect to Leitrim, but put them on too much of a pedestal. And it was more trying to instill in our guys, like, look, look around you. Like we have excellent quality here. And especially to the American kids, because I felt like we were giving too much respect to them as opposed to like some of the guys needed the arm around the shoulder. Like some of the shame, like Shane Brosnan was playing wing back the other day. I was telling them like, you're better than, than like, you know, Jack McCaffrey, not better, but you're as good as any of these backs back in Ireland, like back yourself. And, they, because they're not playing games, they're not getting that. Yeah. So that was the only thing we had to try and instill was our belief. Yeah. See, that's that's the biggest well. challenge. Well, that was the biggest challenge. I was going to say, like, even the likes of London there, you know, they, they've come across this last three years actually to, to down. And they've, they've had a training camp, you know, at the early early January in preparation for the National League. And they've played maybe like a, a second string from RMI on the Saturday and maybe down on the Sunday or something, you know. And it, it, it's a big advantage being able to play those games lads you know so that's a that's a huge it's actually huge for for yourselves like because obviously it's it, 
probably the biggest challenge of the lot for you, not having those game, competitive games. Which probably, in the fact, when it went extra time, it shows the preparation you've put in as well. Maybe, you know, obviously from a training perspective, lads, like to be able to withstand extra time, the fact that later would have had the seven or eight games under their belt as well was was testament to yourself. Quick one for you, lads. Is, is Gillick Park the base then? Is there no, is there, do you train anywhere else or is it just Gillick Park? <clears throat> Uh, no, we we uh, there's other pitches like like for example we'll be training on grass now in Rockland. Uh, they have their setups unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and like yeah, just in preparation for this next game now that'll be on grass, we'll be training there. And they have you know full floodlights. It's I think it's the biggest GA <coughs> pitch outside of Ireland. Like it's unreal. Brilliant. We I think yeah. sorry, make it. We we actually were up there. I think it was the opening. 2010, I think they opened that place. It's absolutely the as you said, the facilities up there are phenomenal. A savage. Are you playing that day, Vars? We yeah, we, yeah, we played. Uh, I think we played uh, New York back I was in playing that game. Yeah. Were you playing that game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Savage place. Fucking savage. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's unreal, man. And then um, there's another one out in Queens now as well. Uh, Shannon Gales have their own pitch. Uh, but like I was talking to a lad Did as it? well, like with, Sha- with Sh- yeah, Shannon Gales is Frank Golden Park, but uh, like Shannon Gales under 10s have like six different teams. Uh, that's just like the numbers they get out, and like again, boys, it would, it would, you'd be scratching your head, like wondering, like, are we in America here? Like, you know what I mean? Some of the times, that because there's maybe you know, you go to like a blitz or something, there's like a hundred kids running around. Last year, Brilliant. we were meant to. Last year we were meant to train with Brooklyn and there was a hurling blitz for like under under eights and under tens and the pitch absolutely wedged with kids like and you're like like is this you know you don't think you're in America like like it's just something you would see maybe in Castle like back home you know yeah it's mad. I know I I noticed that Mickey I noticed that in 2019 <coughs> when it was open for the for the long weekend I noticed there's a huge like you know, very, very proud of their tradition and their Irish culture as well, you know, and I know from speaking to a few people over there, particularly their FILA squads, you know, singing the national anthem together at the end of training and at the end of matches and stuff and, you know, together in the change rooms is class. Like, it's great to see, you know, it's fantastic. Like, and long, long may it continue because obviously if the structures are right underage, there'll be a steady stream and you're not relying then on on, on those sporadic every couple of years of the players. Tell me this, what about the Monday club? More importantly, was, was I obviously was, a Monday club. I was just going to ask that. I was just going to ask that. <laughs> if you go drinking in Ireland on a Monday, everyone's looking at you as if you have a problem, but you're over there a Monday is like a normal fucking, uh, like a weekend day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey had a poor yeah, no. Well, the game was on a Saturday, so... Uh, I see. The, the Sunday was it was actually better Saturday evening than under lights as well. It was, yeah, it was deadly like it because you had it the the Sunday as well. So, um, but it was the bars were open late over here in in New York. So, um, Sunday night it was a five a.m. It was I was on with Marty Marcy on RT Radio One at quarter past five. Oh. So they had told me the day before. So I was like, sound. I'll just stay out till like five. Then that's grand. <laughs> And sure enough, I got in at like five and then hopped on the radio there with Marty at like four past five with sound. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, no, was like, what, was, what was the scene on the Sunday, my guy? Where did this go? We went to Jerry's place in Upper East Side, but yeah, as Shane said there, I sort of tipped on early because I've started my own company here with two other lads. So like, if I'm not Good at month. it, then no, it happens, you know what I mean? So <coughs> It means, but it's not, it's not, it's actually a blessing in disguise though, because sometimes then I just take myself off. Just, you know, when you, you know yourselves, when you kind of <laughs> hit that tipping point, and it's maybe damage limitation from there on in. So I don't know, this last maybe six months, I've got a good habit in place of just tipping on home. But well, here, Mickey, I can guarantee you, Paddy Boyle didn't tip on home or big move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was to them lads to get the post mortem just yet. <laughs> how was how was Gaelic Park, lads? It must have been rocking, was it? It's very, what was the was that the first penalty shootout you were involved in, Mickey? Uh, no, not the first penalty shootout. Uh, but I was it was crazy after it, like like grown men that I've never met or whatever, and you know just older women and stuff just like going mad like like couldn't believe it and i know a lad actually who's been here you know like 30 40 years and all and like tears in his eyes just saying like you know he never thought he'd see the day and stuff like that so like again but it's so hard to explain to people at home but like you know you don't know you don't like even i don't realize how much it means to some people you know over here we've been here for years and 
yeah like all saturday night and even during sunday like like just people reaching out to you that like you never would have thought of me even watching the match but you know maybe just got your number from someone and it was just like so grateful that we're part of history or whatever you know yeah brilliant what and what's that did i read kathy do you have a quad do you t- you didn't tear your quad that could be right did you tear your quad before the game <laughs> I, I i literally the week before i was kicking freeze and um probably kicking them better than I ever did that was probably the problem <laughs> <laughs> I uh I definitely like I was kicking into the wind from like four and I was well in the ball <laughs> and I felt a straight away a sharp like and I knew something's not right here so they reckoned it was some sort of strain but I was just okay. like look in my head in my head it was fine like in, but I knew something was right so going in I was like a couple of painkillers and trying to get as much adrenaline into me like I was trying to feed off the crowd I was I was getting full of caffeine and just roaring and jumping into well, it, trying to get the energy into me. When well, well, you got that that spot for the equalizer, that that left left hand spot, I knew well before I left. That's your spot. You, <laughs> that's your spot in training. That's your yeah, fucking left yeah. and right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know yourself, like just all the training that you'd be putting in, and uh, I was just. I spoke to literally had a conversation with Davy Goldrick. Like he, you know, you probably both know he's one for like chatting away to you the whole game. And uh, on a first time basis with all the players, so I literally was like, "Davey, like, how how long do we have here?" He's like, "This is it now, Shane. Last last kick of the game." And I was like, "Right, all right." But even even he's gone, is he? Um, just he must be gone there, is he? I just want to drop the line. So, Mickey, what's the, what's the story in terms of Sligo now in a couple of weeks, or what what's what's the plan for the next couple of weeks, or what's what's going on there? Uh, well, obviously we'll. We're getting home then next Wednesday night, so we'll be home probably. I don't know if we arrive the Thursday morning, but yeah, we'll set up and give it a rattle. And you know what I mean? Like it's, it's. I don't know. I, me and Shane would talk about stuff like this, but these are just things to be embraced. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. mm-hmm. championship, championship semi-finals or big games in the championship is like what you play for. And when you're a young fella, these are the kind of games you want to be involved in. Like so, and again, that's my attitude: just to go out and just enjoy yourself like like you you work i don't i was never one of these lads who's like you know you need to be like i don't know, fire and brimstone to hold yourself to these mod standards or whatever like you work literally all year for these games it's about coming out and giving it your best shot and seeing that the chips fall where they may you know what i mean yeah mickey you you touched on it there mickey uh, obviously i'll not keep you too much longer but you you touched on it there earlier where you talked about you know that gentleman that went onto the field and being part of that historic occasion, like, and you know, there are memories that last forever, you know. And I suppose that's the game we're in. We were chatting before we went on air, like, and we're thinking about how sterile the inter county game has become. You know, there's the enjoyment has nearly been fucking oozed out of it now at this stage, you know, by, by, by people, like, and you have to enjoy those moments, enjoy the occasions. And I'm sure, you know, you'll go in a couple of weeks now and really, really enjoy it. And even for the likes of yourselves, our lads, like, obviously, you know, you suppose playing inter county football, you know, at, at, at a high level. <sighs> Be working like obviously to be part of this obviously means means something Shane to yourself and Mickey like would, would, would it be right? A hundred percent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for me, it was uh like up there. It's, it's probably the, the greatest um moment in, in both of our careers, realistically. Like because that's a first ever historic thing. Like look, Dublin could win an All Ireland this year, or if not, maybe yeah. it's next year. And you know the same with the club; they'll win a championship. But like. It's not the first ever, and and to be part of that was something really, really special. Because you touched on there, like I'm up in Boston, like Mickey's that he's running his own job in in New York, and there's so much going on. And for everyone all across different periods of their lives, from all over, like Ireland, America, to come together to not even really know each other. Like I'd only been in there like kind of ten weeks. Um, Owen Kearns came a couple of weeks later, like we were kind of thrown together, but we really just clicked and, and became a real squad so quickly, which is, which is very hard to do. Like you, you, you've, you've been a part of county teams before you, both of you, you, you know, yourself, like you'd be going on, on bonding trips and you'd be trying, it takes, takes a long time to try and get that bond. And for us to try and get that and, and actually get it within eight weeks was, was very, very, uh, that, that was probably the most impressive thing for me is that like we became really good friends so quickly. 
That, well, to be honest, that'll be one of the highlights of the whole GA calendar here. The, the video clip of the final whistle going and Johnny Glynn hugging one of your, I don't know, it was a physio who it was, and then the whole squad running out on the middle of the pitch and your man, uh, Brosnan, who scored the winning penalty and he was just going mental and it just... It was just, it was, it was nearly back to the mid nineties again, where the where the people were coming out to the pitches again. It just, it was fucking great to see, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was just it was uh, a good picture of me and Larry McCarthy, like he's the yeah the, uh, the, the, the GA, like, and he was after yeah, yeah. Right after, I was like Jesus, like what's going on here, like. This- hey, Shane. <laughs> Jeez, that's that's you in a in a private box now for the All Ireland final this year, boy. Flights <laughs> first. <laughs> well, well, I'm hoping I could be still, still playing by then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of final, lads. Kind of final. Look, Leitrim, Leitrim, Sligo. You you know yourself with the league results this year. There's only been a kick a kick of ball between them two teams the last year. So obviously, I'm not like it, it'll be a kick of the ball again, lads. Honestly. Yeah, and you know that. Play- you know that. We played them last year. We played them last year, and it was it was a good game. Like, but like mm. Sligo will be like they have some really good players too. You know, like now Murphy and Sean Carbine, mm. boys like that. Like, like, uh, but like again, we're here now, and we'll just go out and enjoy ourselves. Like, you know what I mean? Like, play with a smile on your face, give it, give it everything you have, and see you see how you get on. You know what I mean? It's really as simple as that. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. I will. Not- Lads, just Stevie, if you want to cut across there, any any other? Are you happy enough? No, listen, lads. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Like, listen, yeah. it's great to have you on, and, and and wishes all the best. Now, fantastic. It's great. Like, I think what Shane touched on is right. Like, is you know, we we can talk about Dublin, Mayo, Kerry every week. Like, but but you know, the story of of the of the season will 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 undoubtedly be yourselves and that that first historic victory. So well done, lads, and and enjoy the next few weeks, boy. Yeah, it's, thank it's you, funny man. because uh, we're still in the Connacht Championship and, and for some reason Mayo are out of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jane, yeah. Jane's been telling me off here. He's been telling me off here. This oh. is not you. Oh, you uh, you're the one. You're the one building us up all fucking year. You. <laughs> you Don't start this I shit. I had to get that in somewhere. Oh, uh, stop. <laughs> fucking hell. We'll say, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm not even going to say anything. Lads, <laughs> lads, thanks a minute for coming on. Really appreciate it. And well done again. Yeah, no bar. Thanks, lads. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. All the best.